Okay, financial freedom. That's the ultimate goal. That's what we're going after. That's That should be the drive and the ambition in all of us, to be honest. I don't know why anybody wouldn't be seeking that, but let me break it down for you. I've been told countless times on social media, people have come at me telling me that I'm materialistic, I'm shallow. <laughs> it's literally been called white privilege. Look, the truth is, I talk about money. I absolutely talk about money. Because the goal is financial freedom. What is financial freedom? What is it that financial freedom actually means? It means that you can buy things without concerns that you're not going to be able to take care of your family. It means that you're able to plan for vacations. You're able to provide the things that your kids need. You know, <clears throat> there are different communities and things that ultimately you can get into um, sports, activities, things like that. In certain communities, it depends on the community. It also depends on the taxes in the community, things like that. Because a lot of times our taxes go to pay for those things. So, <clears throat> you know, uh, in different homeowners associations, things like that. Okay, so different cities, different communities, things are paid for. But in some, they're not. And in some, they're only partially paid for. So you can join athletics, you can join basketball, you can do, join football, but ultimately you've got to pay for at least a partial payment for your uniform, if not paying for your full uniform. That's unfortunate. Some kids, some parents, that's incredibly difficult. It's incredibly challenging to be able to pay those things. Sometimes uh, girls can join cheerleaders, they, uh, cheerleading, they can join basketball, they can join the track team, they can join gymnastics, they can... <clears throat> My daughter joined dance, and there were certain things I had to buy for my daughter for uh, her dance program. Um, there wasn't much, though. It was kind of just a few little tidbit extras. Uh, I had to buy several things for her uh, band when she was in the band. Kids like to join the band. Band is extremely expensive. Um, mo I'm not even going to say most. There are some places that offer payment programs to get instruments and things like that for your kid. Um, and some schools actually provide certain instruments, but certain instruments, not most of the instruments, not even all of the instruments, only certain instruments do they provide. So this gets into a costly thing. You know, having a family, having children, you need money. Money is just a tool. Money is a tool to provide the things that you need to provide for your family and to excel in life and be in the position that you want to be in, to make sure that your children are learning. Like, Okay, going through these athletic programs, you learn things. Um, joining martial arts programs, you're learning skills, you're learning things. Going <clears throat> to camp. Um, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. These many different things you learn. Joining the band, you learn skills. So it's not that these things are invaluable and it's like, oh, well, we're just paying for luxuries. Yeah, they absolutely are luxury. They absolutely are a first world problem. Um, oh, how am I going to pay for all the extracurriculars for my kids? But no, it's not even just that. What about just the simple, like basic fundamentals of life? How many people are struggling to pay their mortgage bill? Oh, well, let's blame that on the housing market. People have always struggled to pay their mortgage bill. Now, maybe there are more struggling today than there were 10 years ago, 30 years ago, 50 years ago. It doesn't matter. Change, doesn't change the fact that people have always struggled paying their bills. People struggle paying their electric bill, their water bill, um, providing food for their household. This isn't a new issue. It's not a new crisis that's going on. There's just new awareness of it. And the thing is, is there's so many more options now. Now it's trying to fit in with whatever fad is going on social media, whatever the new popular, cool, neat thing, healthy option is. Now it's like, well, I've discovered this new healthy option of, you know, if we eat these certain things, but those certain things are kind of, they're kind of pricey. I've discovered that there's these teas and there's these supplements, there's these herbs that can help with the sickness that, you know, my mom has, but they're super pricey. This is financial freedom. Not having to worry about those things. Not having to worry about how much is insurance. Not having to worry about, can I afford my car? Now, does that mean you need to drive a Lamborghini or a Mercedes? No, it doesn't. That means you need a vehicle that's reliable that takes you from point A to point B any and every time you need to get there. Not just, 
I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna turn the key and I'm gonna start and pr I'm gonna I'm gonna pray that it starts. That's not where anybody should be, but that's where a lot of people are. A lot of people are taking public transportation, which okay. <clears throat> that shouldn't be frowned upon. There's nothing wrong with public transportation, but what about the people who even struggle to afford paying for public transportation because public transportation isn't free? Well, then some people believe, oh, well, it should be provided for you. Why won't we just have public? Where does that come from? The taxes from the city go to fund that. There's so many different things that people struggle to pay for, struggle to provide. They, they struggle to give their family the things that they want to give their family. They just uh, struggle to give the family the fam things their family needs and the things they desire. Like, you, <laughs> people were not designed. This is my opinion. I don't believe we were designed to work half of our lives away. I mean, and that's it. It's half your life. If you're working... <clears throat> You know, if you're working 40 hours a week, think about how many people commute to work and how much time they spend commuting. Think about people, how many, peop how many people work multiple jobs or supplement their income with a second part-time job or a side hustle or whatever. And these things eat up so much of their time that it's like, then the commute to, to and from these things and acquiring the tools, inventory, uh, you know, everything, the expenses that they could use to fund that side hustle, that little business that they've got going on the side. There's all these things that are happening. So when I talk to people about investing and building for your future and developing better spending habits, develop better saving habits, develop all these different things that you can utilize in your life to position yourself in a better place for your future, that financial freedom, it's not superficial. It's realistic. Look, the reality is you're using money. If you're a part of this society, you're using money. And you're like, well, I don't, I, I'm, I'm okay. I don't need a lot of money. I've heard that from friends and family. Oh, I don't need a lot of money. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I don't need all these material things. I don't need them all. That's fine. You're right. You don't need all the material things, but you do need to take care of yourself. You do need to be able to eat. You need to be able to eat the things you want to eat. If you discover, hey, I shouldn't be eating that because it's not good for me, but the other thing is kind of bad, kind of expensive. You should be able to make those adjustments without questioning the cost. You find out you've got high cholesterol and you need to change your diet. You shouldn't worry about, oh man, that's gonna cost me. No, you should just make the adjustments because you should be in a place of financial freedom. Financial freedom is being free to not be burdened by your finances. It's not being rich. It's not being rich. There are people who live reasonable, reasonably decent lives and they're financially free because their life isn't dependent upon a paycheck. Now, that doesn't mean they're not functioning on money, but that means they've made just different choices in their life. They bought a house when they were younger. They you know, bought their car, bought a decent car that was cheaper and paid it off early in their life. And they just made certain decisions that ultimately, if their job was downsized today, they'd have to probably make some choices, but their life wouldn't suffer because they were downsized today. They're in a decent enough position that they're financially free. They're not burdened by that job. Now, maybe they keep that job because they want to keep building for their retirement. Maybe they keep that job because it offers good health benefits. Maybe they keep that job because they enjoy it. They like what they do. Maybe they keep that job because they want to have more options and more leisure. But ultimately, being financial free is not necessarily being owned by that job. If that job were to disappear, you need to have be positioned to where you're going to be okay. Some people can. Some people are. <clears throat> Most Americans aren't. Lots of people around the world aren't. People in America tend to believe that the government should be doing better to take care of them. Some people think that somebody else should do this. Somebody else should do that. Somebody should provide this. I shouldn't have to pay for this. I shouldn't have to pay for taxes. Everybody complains about what they should be paying for and shouldn't be paying for. What somebody else should be taking care of. 
And you know, people are jumping from this foot to that foot to that foot. I mean, really just making a whole lot of demands and a whole lot of complaints, but ultimately not taking stock of where they are in their own life, in their own situation. <clears throat> now, if you're 40, if you're 50, if you're 60, if you're 70, it's hard to make that choice, say, okay, I want to build for financial freedom now. Not impossible, but harder. The younger you get started, the better. But it's never too late to make wise choices and plan for tomorrow. Even if you've got less tomorrows left. Because the reality is we never know when our day is going to come. It could come when we're extremely old, or it could even come when we're very young. But you should ultimately make wise decisions because... If you have a tomorrow, you don't want to be weighed down. You don't want it to be a burden to have a tomorrow. Ultimately, like people have this, you know, when they're young, this this <clears throat> YOLO lifestyle, right? This you only live once, so why not just be careless? Why not just be reckless? Let's just embrace it, enjoy it, spend whatever we got. You know, I think of that movie Armageddon. When Steve Buscemi, right, he realizes, hey, we're about to take this, you know, rocket to the to the meteor, right, and we're not coming back. So he takes out a big loan from a loan shark and he goes and spends all the money all crazy, right? And he's like, I don't have it tomorrow. Now, they don't know they don't have it tomorrow. That's why the loan shark gives him this huge amount of money. But he believes he doesn't have it tomorrow. But that's the way a lot of young people operate. Sadly, that's how a lot of middle-aged people still operate. They just go to work, they work hard. Some people don't even work hard, but the one, they go to work, they work and they earn their money, they get this money, this decent check, this small check, this big check. Doesn't even matter how big or small the check is because people are living so far beyond their means that it doesn't matter what size the check is. They get this check and what's the first thing they do? It's gone, it's gone. So they spend their check and then Tomorrow, all right, well, what can, I, what can I float? How can I make it? What's, you know, they want to see that concert. They want to get that new pair of shoes. They want that new handbag. How could they go to work without that cool new handbag? I remember hearing Dave uh, Ramsey on his podcast. One time he talked about the people coming out of college. They, had, they were lucky enough to be blessed with a old beater car, right, to get them through college. But then when they graduated, the first thing, there was a statistic. He actually pulled a, a valid statistic about the biggest expense that most college students when they got their degree was a new car. Now, how are they getting to and from class? How are they getting to and from things before? How do they get to and from the store? Either they took public transportation, which they could keep taking for a hot minute, or they had an old beer. They had mom's, grandma's old car, Aunt Ruth's old car, you know? Uncle Billy's, you know, they had this old beat up car that just got them around, but they got this nice fancy new job. And instead of saving some of that money, they're just like, gotta live for today. I gotta have this, <clears throat> gotta have this image. I gotta look cool. I gotta have the nice ride. You know what I'm saying? Because you can't pull up to the new job and an old beater. Gotta, gotta show up and represent already. I gotta show like I've been working here for 10 years, even though it's my first week. Stop worrying about your image so much. People call me white privilege. People call me superficial. People call me materialistic. People call me a lot of things. I don't really care. I don't care what people think. I care what I think. I care what Corey and Colton and Kimberly think. I care about God. I care about, am I living for the kingdom? Am I trying to glorify God in the things I do? Or am I trying to impress those around me? Now we all go through moments, everybody does. I do, we all do. We all try to wanna to look good. <clears throat> we all wanna look good. We all wanna impress our friends, our boss, you know. Wanna show mom, hey mom, I made it, look. I know I wanted to show mom I made it. <laughs> but mom doesn't want you to get in a bad place to make it. Mom doesn't want you to look like you made it. She wants you to actually get there. So work for it, earn it. Let's develop that financial freedom so you can be there for mom, because mom's gonna need you. Just think about that. 
I want y'all just marinate on that, think about it. Hopefully this helps. Hopefully it gives you some insight onto me and why I talk so much about money because money is an important tool that we need to learn how to properly handle. It's your boy. Like, subscribe, ding your bell. I'm out.